Welcome to the Dash 8 Q400 Systems Course Pneumatics Module. In this module, we will give an overview of the pneumatics system and then talk about the two bleed sources, the engine bleeds and the APU bleed. We'll then also talk about the electronic control unit, or ECU, before we discuss the deicing system and the door seals. Last but not least, we'll talk about the limitations and normal and abnormal procedures for the pneumatics system. The pneumatic system on the Dash A Q400 supplies pressurized air to the various systems that require it and is one of the simpler systems on the Dash 8. Pressurized air, or bleed air, on the Q400 can be supplied by either the engines or the APU. Bleed air on the Q400 is primarily used for cabin air conditioning and pressurization, but also provides a source of pressurized air for wing, tail and engine inlet de-icing, as well as pressurizing the door seals. An ECU, or electronic control unit, monitors the bleed and air conditioning systems together and regulates all the valves to provide the required airflow for pressurization and air conditioning. The primary source of bleed air on the Q400 is the engines. Pressurized air for the various systems on the Q400 is drawn from two different ports located at different stages of the engine compressors. The low pressure, or LP port, is at an early stage in the compressor and siphons off a small portion of compressed air from the engine to provide pressurized air to the various aircraft systems. A second high pressure or HP port is located at a later part in the compressor. The air at this stage in the engine has been compressed further and is at a higher pressure and temperature. Output from this port is controlled by the high pressure shutoff valve or HPSOV. When the engine is operating at low power, below about 36%, the low pressure port does not provide enough air pressure for the bleed system. At this point, the high pressure shutoff valve is commanded open by the ECU, so higher pressure bleed air can enter from the high pressure port. As the engine speed accelerates, the high pressure shutoff valve closes once the low pressure port can provide sufficient pressure. This usually occurs around 36% torque and is sometimes apparent as a power spike or cabin pressure spike during small power changes around this point. Note there is also a check valve in the low pressure line that prevents high pressure air from the HP port from flowing back outwards through the low pressure port. Due to the additional compression, air from the high pressure port is much hotter than air from the low pressure port and must be cooled by a precooler prior to entering the aircraft systems. The precooler is a simple heat exchanger that takes air flow from an earlier stage in the compressor that is cooler and runs it over the hot air, thus cooling the hot air before it enters the aircraft systems. The cooling air is then vented overboard after it passes through the precooler. The amount of cooling air passing through the precooler is controlled by an integral valve within the cooler itself that, like everything else in the system, is controlled by the ECU. You'll also notice that there is another precooler in the deicing system. This ensures that air entering the deicing system is cooled even further to ensure it is not damaging to any equipment in the deicing system. The amount of bleed air being allowed to enter the air conditioning system is controlled by a nacelle shutoff valve, or NSOV. The nacelle shutoff valve, like everything else in this system, is regulated by the ECU based on system demands and bleed switch positions. When an engine bleed switch is selected off, the nacelle shutoff valve is closed completely. When the bleed switch is turned on, the nacelle shutoff valve opens. The amount it opens is modulated to regulate the amount of bleed air that enters the cabin. The nacelle shutoff valve is discussed in more depth during the air conditioning module. You'll also notice that after the nacelle shutoff valve, there is another check valve. This valve prevents pressurized air from other bleed sources, such as the APU or the other engine, from backing up into the bleed system of this engine. The APU bleed system is much simpler than the engine system, as the APU only operates at one speed. A single bleed port in the APU feeds the bleed system through an APU bleed shutoff valve. This valve is controlled by the APU bleed switch on the APU control panel. There is no lockout to prevent the bleed system from being supplied from multiple sources. However, the air conditioning system is only designed to receive bleed air from a single source, either the engines or the APU. Both sources should not be used simultaneously as this may cause too much pressure for the air conditioning system. Also, remember that the APU cannot be used in flight, therefore you cannot depend on the APU as a source of bleed air in flight. 
Once the aircraft takes off, the APU will automatically shut down as the wheels leave the ground. The Electronic Control Unit, or ECU, is the brain of the entire pneumatics system and also controls the functioning of the air conditioning system, which will be described in a separate module. For redundancy, the ECU has four separate channels. The channels are divided into left and right channels. Each side monitors and controls the bleed system for its corresponding engine. On each side of the ECU are two channels, a primary digital channel and a backup analog channel. Normally, both digital channels control their respective engine's valves to maintain appropriate air pressure, flow rate, and temperature from the engine. A series of sensors monitor all of these parameters, and the ECU can also fully close the nacelle shutoff valve to stop bleed air should a leak or temperature or pressure exceedance be detected. The ECUs also regulate the position of the nacelle shutoff valve to balance the bleed sources and ensure each engine is providing approximately 50% of the needed bleed air, assuming that both engines are running. Should a failure occur in a digital channel of the ECU, the analog channel on the same side can take over operation of the bleed system for the corresponding engine. Should a power loss occur to a DC main bus, the corresponding ECU digital channel will also stop working, but the analog channel can take over, as it is powered by the opposite DC main bus. For example, if we lose DC main bus power on the left side, the left digital ECU channel will stop working as it has no power. However, the left analog channel is powered from the right main bus and can take over operation of the left engine bleed system. Operation in analog mode is much simpler. In analog mode, the nacelle shutoff valve can only be commanded open or closed. The valve does not partially open to help regulate flows or balance the load in analog mode. The bleed system is either on or off. Additionally, the analog channel does not have any control over the high pressure shutoff valve, so the high pressure shutoff valve will fail closed. Only low pressure bleed air can be supplied from this particular bleed source in that case. While the analog channel is not as complex as the digital channel, it does allow some bleed airflow even after failures. Note that protections against leaks or excessive temperatures and pressures are still provided by the analog channel. Pressurized bleed air for the deicing system and for the door seals is supplied by the engine bleeds only. The APU cannot provide bleed air for deicing. This makes sense as the APU cannot run when the airplane is airborne anyways. It should be noted that bleed air for the deicing and the door seal system does not have a shutoff valve other than the control valves within the deicing system itself. Bleed air is available to the deicing system anytime the engines are running, regardless of the position of the engine bleed switches. Another interesting note is that the deicing system can also directly control the high pressure shutoff valve. A pressure switch in the deicing system detects low pressure in the deicing system and can command the high pressure shutoff valve to open, even overriding a command from the ECU to close it. This ensures there is always sufficient pressure available to run the deicing system, regardless of the bleed system status. The 1L and aft cargo doors on the Q400 are sealed, when closed, by inflatable seals located around the perimeter of each door. When either door is closed and latched, the seal around that door is inflated until the door is unlatched again. The air for these seals is supplied by a pressurized air reservoir located under the floorboards near the 1L door. This reservoir contains a reserve of pressure that allows for multiple door cycles while the engines are shut down. The reservoir is refilled by air pressure in the deicing lines. As a result, this reservoir can only be refilled when an engine is running. The APU cannot fill the deicing lines and thus cannot refill the reservoir. There is only one limitation associated with the pneumatic system on the Q400. Takeoff and landing is prohibited with the bleeds on. Unless, of course, the operator has purchased supplement number 21 and they can then take off and land with the bleeds on. So if most operators purchase this supplement, why do I even mention this limitation? because of something called supplement compatibility. First, let's talk about what a supplement is. A supplement is an optional change to the aircraft flight manual that an operator can purchase from the manufacturer. It can amend part of the aircraft flight manual for optional equipment or different procedures. Of course, not every operator needs every option and so they don't need to pay for options they don't require. And some are certainly more popular than others. 
For example, did you know that on the Q400, the APU is actually an optional piece of equipment covered by supplement number 6? Of course, that being said, every Q400 delivered has had the optional APU included. So why is this even important? Again, because of supplement compatibility. As more supplements are developed, they have to be tested against the other supplements that already exist to ensure they are compatible and can be used at the same time. In some cases, certain supplements were never tested together and thus cannot be approved for use together. In other cases, they may cause conflicts or too much loss of aircraft performance when combined, so it is important to keep track of which supplements are compatible and which are not. So back to supplement number 21, bleeds on takeoff and landing. Supplement number 21 cannot be used if any of these other supplements are being used at the same time. Supplement number 3, takeoff and landing with tailwinds between 10 and 20 knots. Supplement number 13, takeoff with reduced takeoff power, or RTOP. Supplement number 94, ferry flight with landing gear extended. If any of these conditions above are being used, the bleeds must be off for takeoff and landing. All of these supplements were made incompatible because drawing bleed air from the engine reduces power output. In all of these cases, the extra power lost to the bleed system could impact performance, so bleed use is prohibited in all of these cases. Normal operation of the pneumatic system is very simple. The bleed switches should be selected off for engine starting and shutdown to ensure sufficient cooling air can pass through the engine and to prevent the possibility of fumes from within the engine entering the bleed system during the start when the engine is running below idle speeds. Once the engines have been successfully started, the bleed switches can be selected on, usually as part of the after start flow, and the bleed selector is set to min unless a higher airflow is required to heat or cool the cabin quickly during a very hot or very cold day. If a bleeds off takeoff or landing is required, such as for reduced or maximum power takeoffs, the bleeds are selected back off prior to takeoff. Even if the bleeds can be on for takeoff, the airflow must be set to min for takeoff and landing. Note that a reminder is displayed on the ED for the bleed status relative to the takeoff power setting. If no bleed enunciation appears, then the bleeds are currently selected off. A white bleed enunciation indicates that the bleeds are on and set to min. A yellow bleed enunciation on the ED indicates an incorrect bleed setting for takeoff. Either the bleeds are on when they must be off, or the bleed setting is not at min. Once the bleed system is configured correctly, the yellow bleed enunciation turns white or disappears if the bleeds are off. Once the takeoff is complete, usually right after flap retraction, the bleed system can be reconfigured as required. Usually the bleeds are selected on and norm for most flights, though max can be used if higher airflow to the cabin is needed, though it does cause a decrease in engine power. Prior to landing, bleeds must be configured for landing again. The bleeds are normally on for most landings, except for tailwinds between 10 and 20 knots or the landing gear extended ferry flights, as mentioned in the supplement compatibility discussion under limitations. Even when the bleeds are on for landing, they must be set to min as for takeoff. This is to ensure maximum power is available should a go around be required. Finally, the bleeds should be selected off prior to shutdown. The engines should run with the bleeds off for at least 30 seconds prior to shutdown as this aids with thermal stabilization in the engine and helps to prevent premature engine wear. There are only a very few set of abnormal operations for the aircraft bleed system. As always, follow the appropriate checklist. All channels of the ECU monitor the bleed system for faults, including over temperature or over pressure, as well as leaks. Leaks can be dangerous as the bleed air is very hot and can damage unprotected parts of the wing or fuselage. If either the digital or analog channel detects a problem with any of these systems, the ECU will shut down the bleed system by closing the nacelle shutoff valve and the high pressure shutoff valve and will illuminate the corresponding bleed hot number one or number two caution lights. The only action to take in this case is to turn off the corresponding bleed switch to ensure the faulty system remains deactivated. Of course, if both bleed hot caution lights illuminate, both bleed systems will deactivate and the aircraft will depressurize, thus requiring a descent to 10,000 feet. It is worth noting that even if the ECU has shut down a bleed system, the de-icing system can still override the command to close the high pressure shutoff valve and thus always ensures there is sufficient pressure for the de-icing system.
We will now conduct a brief review. I suggest you prepare to pause the video as each question is displayed and attempt to answer it yourself before the correct answer is revealed. Let's begin. This concludes the current module. I hope you found this information useful. Please ask any questions you may have in the comments section below. And please subscribe to the channel to be alerted when more modules are complete. Thank you for watching.